this is Andrea with Leisure Day Alone Art to Wear, bringing you some art to living. So today I will be chatting with Miss Erica, and she um, is crazy. We met through a, a mutual, well, for us, a business friend, um, mm -hmm. but it's someone that she's known for a while. So, um, and that, that's basically it. We've met that way and been in touch through Instagram ever since. Yeah. Um, so yeah. thank you, Erica. Welcome. <laughs> thank you for letting me participate in this being part of this. I'm so I'm so excited. I think it's so cool that you're doing this. Good, good, good. So can you tell us a little bit about yourself and your business? Absolutely. So uh, I live in the New Orleans area now, but I actually grew up in Ohio. Uh, I've only lived here for about seven years. Um, so, and I love, I love being in the South. I love New Orleans. It was hands down best, best decision ever. Um, so I am an independent consultant with a company called Arbonne International. So what I do is I represent their plant-based products, whether it's skincare, makeup, nutritional products, um, everything is plant-based, chemical-free, cruelty-free, you know, repeat approved, non-GMO project verified. It's a really, really clean product line. And um, I actually been using the products for almost 20 years. Um, I haven't been an independent consultant for that long. Uh, but initially, my family just when I was in high school fell in love with the products because they addressed um, some health issues that we had. We were all starting to feel better and look better. Um, I encouraged my mom to start a business, actually. And she has a very successful Arbonne business. And when I graduated from college, she was like, I think you should come do this with me. And I was like, no, mom, like that's, you know, you can, you and your mom friends can like sell Arbonne. Um, but I graduated from college right before the recession in 2008. So I always say like, I got my big girl job and then I promptly got downsized. <laughs> right? right. I mean, that was just, that was just happening then to a lot of people and a lot of people my age. Um, so through the course of that, I started doing Arbonne just to make some extra cash, right? I, I needed a second job. I needed a side hustle. Um, and right. I just really fell in love with it. I love my customers. I love that I get to help other women start their own businesses. I love that I get to meet people like Andrea. Like, it just, it's amazing. And I, I yeah, I'm, I'm a lifer now. I love it. Well, good. Now, how long have you been in business? You said um, maybe a little bit after 2008-ish? Yeah, so I've been in business since 2009. Okay. So, what is well, that? About 12 years, 11 years, roughly? Yeah. Yeah. Like that. <laughs> and then what inspired you to start your business? So what inspired me really was that it was something I found myself naturally talking about all the time. You know, it was something that, you know, I I felt a lot of passion about it because I was sharing my experiences and what I liked about it. Um, so from that aspect, it was just kind of a natural fit to make that um, a side gig. And then when I started wanting to make it something, you know, that I did more full time and really put a lot of effort into, it was really just because I saw how I was impacting people, whether it was through better products or whether I was help, able to help someone else start their own business. Um, so really the, the impact that I saw that I got to make on other people was really amazing. Good, good, good. Now, have you had any challenges since you started in 2009? Of course. <laughs> You know, I think self-doubt is a constant challenge. Yes, it is. And that is something that for the longest time I thought it was just me. And the more I networked and met and experienced, you know, other business women, I learned that it's something we all struggle with all the time, kind of like that self-doubt or imposter syndrome. Um, so that is that is something that's always present. You just mm -hmm. learn to work through it or work in spite of it, or use it to motivate you, or, you know, right. whatever the case may be for you. Um, so that's always present. And then, you know, it's learning and being comfortable riding out the hills and valleys, right? Because sometimes you have really great months, right? You're, you're making a lot of money, you're doing really well, you're engaging with a lot of people, whether it's on social media, or, you know, whatever your platform is. And then, you might have a few months where 
nothing. <laughs> you know, right. it feels like you're working just as hard and you're not seeing anything. So um, definitely, you know, being being able to, even when it doesn't feel good or even when you're feeling really discouraged, to just continue to know that you're putting good stuff out there and to just keep doing it. Now, since COVID has been around, how has that affected your your business? Like, have you had any any, I guess, good or bad effects from COVID? It's it's really it's been a mix. Um, initially, when COVID hit, it actually didn't hurt my business. It kind of gave it a little boost, right? Because we're all we're all at home. You know, I was able to do a lot via social media and via Zoom, right. and you know, it it really kind of gave me a nice you know nice little boost up, you know, maybe people that I hadn't been able to connect with suddenly were available because they can't go do their other things. Um, and so now that we're, you know, kind of figuring out what life is maybe post COVID it's, it's been a little tricky, you know, cause I'm, I'm now trying to figure out, okay, do I, do I keep doing everything completely online and distant? Do I reintroduce in-person things? Do I do a mix? So it's, yeah, there has, there has been some good and bad, and it's been a constant learning process and just, you know, trying something. And if it doesn't work, trying something else. Yeah, that's true. That's true. So what keeps you motivated? That is an excellent question. Um, because for me, it's changed over the years. Uh, so I think that's one of the biggest things is finding letting it be okay that it might change what motivates you. Cause I, I, at least for me, I think that can be tricky. Like I get in my head that like, this is the, the thing. And so when that's not the thing anymore, I don't know what to do. Um, so, you know, letting it change. Like when I first started in Arvon, I was like, well, I want to move to Louisiana one day. So being in a position where I had, you know, the money saved up or being in a position where my business could support a move, you know, where my business could still be thriving post a move. So that really motivated me for the first few years. And so then once I hit that big goal, I kind of was like, okay, well, what, what now, you know? So for me now it's, you know, trying to learn new skill sets, trying to grow my team bigger, trying to, you know, mm -hmm. so it's, it, it's changed and I'm learning that it's okay. That what motivates us can change. Um, yeah. So I am, you know, right now I'm actually in the process of kind of figuring out what the next, like I'm a big believer in, a lot of people call them dream boards, goal boards, you know, whatever they might be. I need the visual, right? I need something yeah. to see. Um, so right now part of my vision board is a little blank because I'm not quite sure. Um, so I'm, I'm trying to figure that piece out, but learning that that's okay. You know, mm -hmm. it's, it's okay for that to constantly be changing and to be having to figure out what motivates you now. Exactly, exactly. So do you feel that there's anything that we have not talked about that you feel that we should know? I think for me, the biggest thing that I have learned over the years of doing this is there is space for everyone. So whatever your thing is that you're thinking you're passionate about or you wanna do or you wanna try or you wanna get involved in, don't look at all the other people that are doing it because there's nobody that's like you. Okay. So it's okay if you want to start, you know, selling makeup, do it. Even though maybe you have five other friends that are doing it, it's okay. Cause you all bring something very unique to the table, you know? Yeah. So I think to me, that is something that I have really, really learned. And I gravitate toward women that really feel that same way because there, there is space for everyone and, you know, just put your unique spin on it and you're going to do amazing. Right, right. Okay, Miss Erica. So tell the Bijos how they can find you on social media, website, whatever your platform may be, or all of your platforms. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I'm on Instagram and I just started TikTok. So be patient with me on that one because I'm so... <laughs> I'm like one of the older people on TikTok, so I'm still having to learn how to use it. Um, <laughs> so you can find me there at Erica Del Rey, and Erica is E-R-I-C-A 
Delray is D-E-L-R-A-E. Um, and I post, I post a ton of stuff on, on Instagram. I'm super active on Instagram. So definitely find me there. Um, and I also, I do, like I mentioned before I do zoom. So I do a weekly zoom event and I do always post it on Instagram. So if you follow me on Insta, you can, you can find it there. And I respond to messages there and things very quickly. So don't hesitate to use that platform. Um, and then for my website, it is Erica Nisley. So Erica, E-R-I-C-A. Nisley is K-N-I-S-E-L-Y uh, dot Arbon dot com. And from there you can see, you know, I have a whole profile on there. You can see all of the products that I represent um, and, you know, check it out. Good, good, good. And I will be posting that information down below in the description so that you can follow Miss Erica. Thank you for joining us. So excited to have you. Thank you so much. I love that you're doing this. And I'm so excited that I get to be a part of it. Thank you for thinking yeah. of me. <laughs> Good. Thank you, ma'am. Hope to see you guys soon. Bye.